welcome to A New View. We are Restored Ministries, and we are so glad that you join us each and every week here on Kingdom Broadcasting Network. Today, we've been talking about this whole week, life lessons. Yep. Not just things that we can share with our children, but things that we need to learn and in different relationships that we're in. It's good to have those things. And this episode, we're going to be talking about dealing with disappointments and addressing expectations. Because even us big kids have to deal with disappointments. We have to address expectations. <laughs> yeah. And so that's really what we want to kind of talk about today. Yes. Yep. I feel like we can't um, address disappointment or expectations without talking about communication because Very I think good. that's probably one of the biggest reasons we have disappointment because you, well not only do you not express your um, expectations but just in what you think you're expressing and maybe it's not quite clear yeah. and and um, and your hopes regardless of expectations um, my, my poor our oldest son he thinks he's a good communicator and <laughs> somehow, I, mean, some, I mean he's you're like no swing, okay. yeah so yeah, so there's a lot of disappointment that's really unwarranted, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. Poor well, thing. that's 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 perfect, Kim. That is really right because I think it does come down to communication because that whole thing about anger is really just unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. But really, we're angry because some of us we haven't voiced those expectations, yeah. and yes. I know that I've shared. I would me. get very angry and resentful that you know I had this expectation that you know um, my husband's going to be off on the weekends and we're going to go to the farmer's market and we're going to have breakfast and we're going to have a date. I haven't seen him all week and then we're going to do that. And then here comes Saturday and all of a sudden he's like, I'm tilling the garden. I have to go take my mom here. And I love, he's a great, you know, son. He takes great care of his mother. And I love that he puts everybody else usually first before him. But, but he, I'm like, oh, I had, but I never voiced it. In your saying, mind, you were going on a date. Yeah, in my <laughs> mind, I had done planned our date yeah. and everything. And then I'm like, that's not how I expected today to go. And then yeah. I would pout. And then he'd be like, why are you upset? But I would be angry and resentful because I never voiced my expectations. Yeah. Yeah, you had that You had that rolling around in your head that that oh, was yeah. all going to play yeah. out. Now I tell him, I want this, 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 this is what I yeah. plan. And I have to tell him, you know, in advance. And yeah. I, think, I think that's a great point, especially for marriage or... If you're in a relationship that, um, I'm all like in a relationship, male and female, but boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, because men don't communicate like we do. No. And they do not know what our little minds have already thought of or what we're thinking is going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, whether we're planning right. something or, or any of that. And you hit the nail on the head because I've noticed, and I was, I think I was telling my friend Julie this, but I've, I've noticed that when I tell Jeff exactly what I want or need, that is so much mm -hmm. more productive. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, it's, I end up getting what I need or what I want and not in a selfish way, but where then he knows. And right. it's not me just hoping that he knows or hoping he doesn't forget or hoping that he knows how I feel because that's not really fair. No. Number one, right. they don't think anything right. like we do. I mean, that's like a exactly. duh. If you've read any marriage books or right. any books about the opposite sex, you should know that. And if you don't, we just told you. Right, so, right. Now you, now you know better, yeah, you so know. you better do better. Yes. Or in dealing with the disappointments, because then sometimes I voiced my expectations and said, you know, you've been working really long hours or he was traveling for a while. You've been traveling. I have da -da 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 this, this, and that. And he would say, oh, I can't do that today because I... I made yeah, this, I'm going to do yeah. this, this, and this, and that. And I'd be like, <gasps> and I would have to deal with those disappointments, you know. <laughs> and the old me was be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I would just blah, 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 blah. And, and then finally it's looking, dealing with those saying, I didn't voice those expectations. I understand yeah. he has to keep this commitment mm -hmm. that he yeah. made, that he did that. I can compromise and mm -hmm. I can do that. But for a long time in our marriage, I think I was not a compromiser. I wanted my way. I want, you know, I just because yeah. I thought, you know, if I, you should be, I used to tell him all the time, you should be able to know. We've yeah. been together long enough, you know, yeah. like, I, I don't know. That was somebody's bitter <laughs> mom at some point in the world that said they should know. Like, and we all were like, yeah, they should know. Yeah. You know, we picked it now. Right, right. And then like, he's like, I don't know. You did not tell me, Michelle. And, and they be, don't. I mean, no, half of the don't. time they don't. No. Like, we're not excusing every husband. But honestly, mm -hmm. girls, sometimes they just don't know. Yeah, you think right. they should remember. Or they need to listen, you know, fine tune yeah. the ears. Yeah. Like, remember I told you about the different things? He would hear little bits of it, and then yeah. he would put them and be like, uh, you punkin' me. Did you just put those in my stocking? Or, you know, Christmas, yeah. or just different things. I'm like, 
what part did you not hear of yeah. this? But yeah, yeah, I think that's communication is the total key yeah. for us to address those expectations and, and I dealing think with the taking it into the, um, the expectations are premeditated resentments. I feel Oof. like you have to say uncommunicated that. expectations. Right. Yes. Right. Because it's, it's fine to be disappointed if you have expressed it and there's not a good right. reason why somebody didn't meet it. But yeah, yeah not to set yourself up for failure. But um, but that said. Sometimes we create our own heartbreaks through our expectations. Right, mm -hmm. we definitely it's like, do. You, who wants to be the designer of their own heartbreak? Just, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we have to really be careful in our expectations. Um, there are two types of pains, one that hurts you and one that changes you. Oh, that's yeah. good. That will sing all day yeah. long. That's true. I vote that's for true. the one that changes. Yes, Even though me that too. will actually probably hurt too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> it will hurt, but that's it's true. It really like changes you. Yeah. scorched <laughs> in the process mm -hmm. of that. That's good. That is really good. I know, um, Again, because we're talking life lessons and stuff with kids. Uh, Jeff and I were talking over Thanksgiving. I think we were sharing with like my sister-in-law about, you know, teaching your kids how to deal with disappointment. Right. You know, and it is something you can teach your kids mm -hmm. in the sense of showing them like how you deal with disappointment or having the conversation right. of um, how to deal with disappointment. And I think it's important that we talk to our kids about it no matter what age because mm -hmm. they've probably experienced a disappointment. So you've probably yeah. seen how they behave. But because we need to learn at every age, and sometimes we need to learn it over and over, that we're not always going to get our way, and right. we're not always going to get what we want, and yeah. it is going to hurt some. Right. Um, and even, I mean, we use a lot of this stuff like when we're talking to our kids in regards to like sports, or in regards to like when they're in competition for something, or or whatever the case may be, that you're you know you're not always going to get a place. You're not. You, not everybody needs a trophy. That's just our belief. I'm I not preaching to anybody else I was about, just that, talking just about that. Just how we have trophies. to we have to learn what it means to have a no. What does that look like? Does that mean a no is like, then you're not gonna try again? Or right. is a no like, no, now now go back to the drawing board and let's look at it. Like just having those conversations because if, you know, you don't ever have those conversations with your kids and you get upset with them for the way they behave, they're children. I mean, right. if you haven't shown them or told them or sat down and not yelled at them about it, mm -hmm and just said, hey, I know how you feel, mm -hmm. and it's not a fun feeling, mm -hmm. but let, let mommy tell you what this looks like, how I've dealt with that, or or whatever the case may be. Um, so a, a lot, lot of it, of again, is conversation, yes. Right. There's and a lot of adults that haven't ever been told no, and so then they have this entitlement. No, but they have this <laughs> yeah. entitlement mentality, yeah. and we've seen a lot of that this year, that, that you're thinking like, where do these people come from that, that these are things that have just destroyed their mindset, you know, yeah. the, um, that just because mm -hmm. this person won the election, the, the world's over and you're thinking, yeah. really? That That's not a, a, a disappointment that's enough for you to pack your bags and call it a day. Yeah. You know, that, that there's going to be things that we like or we dislike. Dig deeper, right? You know, yeah. Dig deeper. Oh. You know, a no builds character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember my brother Toby, um, I, I loved him. He had all these great little sayings, and uh, he passed away in, in 2006. So I really miss hearing his voice, and I really miss his little mm. nuggets of, of wisdom. But I will never forget, this was actually the week before he died. My niece was trying out for cheerleader, and she'd been on the cheerleading team. And then, um, you know, all of that is like the political, you know, it's whoever's doing this and this and that. You don't have to be the net best yeah. cheerleader. You're not always going to make the team. It's going to be, you know, they're going to vote for whoever they want and things. Yeah. And so she didn't make the team and she was really, really good and just couldn't understand. And my sister was a little upset and saying like, oh, I can't believe that. And you know, like, life's not fair. And my brother, I'll never forget. It still rings in my ear. And he said, uh, something about, he said, um, no builds character, you know, a no yeah. builds character. Yeah. He said, you can't win at everything. Yes. And I love that because I'm not a believer in participation trophies either. Um, but I don't believe that, you know, just because you didn't win, you're not a loser. Just kind of right. like that. Yes. Somebody else's win is not your defeat. Right. You just, you know, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser, but it's not a defeat for right. you right. to keep going. But not everybody is on the same level. And I think that's where our society has become that everybody needs a participation trophy. Yeah. That everybody That everybody needs to be recognized. But some people exceed and some people just, and my son is getting this because he's in the workforce, you know. Um, 
he's been working and he's just like, I don't understand how this person cannot do work and not be recognized and this and that. And he's kind of like me and his dad, you know, overachiever, you know, get it done, go above yeah. and beyond. And he's, I said, son, you're going to run into that in life everywhere. everywhere. And then my daughter finds it when they're in these pro group projects at school. And <laughs> Someone's things. always doing and most she's of the just work. like, you know, then I said, Connor, a lot of that is releasing that control because I know you're a perfectionist and deal with those like me yeah. and you want everything. So you got to release the control. They're going to have to pick up the thing or you're just going to have to say, Hey, this is my part. Be vocal. You know, don't try and do it all yeah. for them. So I yeah. see a lot of those things going, but I mean, the, the nose build character mm -hmm. and that's really the disappointments that, that we face in life. You said, if we allow those to have us become, you know, entitled and angry and just the world dealt me a bad hand, yeah. it's unfair. Or we can have those, let us grow. And like you said, go yeah. back to the drawing board. You know, yeah. where could I have done better in this? Yeah. Where could I have done differently? Lord, yeah. change my heart in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes I think you might have to sit in your disappointment oh, for yes. a little bit. Hopefully oh, not yes. a super long time, but, um, there's purpose even in that mm -hmm. and, and what we do at that time. For sure. When I was reading a little bit about this, it, you know, pe different people have studied obviously disappointment and whatever, but that it can lead to depression or despair. And you have to, you have to make sure that you keep right. hope alive. Exactly. You know, when you go through these different disappointments, adjust your expectations and mm -hmm. learn from your defeat stuff. We're all saying mm -hmm. again, did you read my notes? No, that's <laughs> disappointments and fa failure build character and patience. Right. And as parents, you know, yes, we want to help our kids and even save them some, from some different things, but we don't want to save them from the opportunities of building their no. character and, mm -hmm. and having to struggle mm -hmm. some and all that. Right. Um, you know, teaching us, one of the things that's important is, is teaching us learning and then teaching other people, other, our kids, how to lose, how to win and lose with grace. Right. Because again, right. we're not all going to win. Not we're all always going to lose gracefully. Um, <laughs> and then I put dig deeper on this. How yes. Appropriate. yes. How appropriate. But I was just thinking too, I know we shared, um, in our last episode, I shared a little bit about like my weekend just being kind of just like blah and some of that most of that had to do with I was talking to my sister about sharing this too my biological my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer last week after our show the next day and it was unexpected and um, it hit my sister and I pretty hard right. and you know while yes he can fight lung cancer and yes there's right. there's gonna be a plan for that all weekend um, with that news, coupled with that news, was just stuff that I just kind of wasn't real. Jeff and I just weren't on the same page on some different things. And, and I told him what was going on with my dad, and I had a good cry about it with him. So I didn't leave him in the dark on that. Mm -hmm. But I just felt this, it, I have to say it had to be, you know, I was sad, but I was also disappointed. And for right. me, it was partly, you know, sad for him and disappointed that, you know, my father has struggled with alcohol for the large majority of his life. Mm -hmm. And over the past few years, he's sober and he is a right. believer and has a strong relationship with the Lord. And I'm sad for him that he's gonna go through this, but you know what? He has told my sister and I, I'm not afraid. I'm not mm -hmm. scared. You know, That's God's good. got me. That's, That's all he good. said is God's got me. My sister's like, oh my gosh, I wish my faith was that strong because I don't feel like that for you. Right. And um, my disappointment comes from, I think what part of I've been feeling is, you know, my relationship with him isn't the best I've wanted it, you know, and I know that takes two people, mm -hmm. but I've just asked God, you know, I have pictured myself at my father's funeral. You know, I don't know when that will be, but in any relationship that you, you know, that you struggle with or you're disappointed in, in the state of it, whether it's your marriage or a right. friendship or even with your kids, you know, you have grown kids or maybe mm -hmm. your relationship isn't great with them. You know, when you come to a certain point, you might have some disappointment over that. And God's right. just kind of got all weekend was like, I need you to be quiet. I need mm -hmm. you to sit quietly. And I didn't. And I came off kind of bitter to my friends. I was kind of in a bad mood. Thankfully, Jeff knew kind of what I was walking through and he didn't give me too much of a hard time. But I just, I didn't sit in that. And right. I wasn't, not sit in it in, in a bad way, but I didn't just sit and, and you have the process time. Yeah. yeah and right. so um, God's just kind of been, for me, it's like you may feel disappointment and upset for whatever reason. Right but don't lose hope. Exactly right, what we're exactly. walking, You didn't sit in it. About. I mean, you sat in it for a little bit. Yeah. What, what's that That saying about, you know, the, the ashes and sackcloth or whatever? You yeah. know, I remember when I did that fasting, uh, the, the blogs about the fasting downloads. Mm -hmm. And I was, when I began fasting, and I was like angry and bitter because everybody's still eating what they're wanting to eat at my <laughs> house. And I'm like fasting, and I'm just like bitter and angry. And, you know, and the Lord's like, uh, 
you're still in your ashes and sackcloth. I mean, for me, it was, I was still in my nightgown moping around like, <laughs> you know, so that, but I was just like, you know, and, and it's okay yeah. because God wants us to rest in those disappointments. Yes. Mm-hmm. He wants us to rest in him in those disappointments, mm-hmm. not yeah. to live in those disappointments right. and go into despair. And so many people will get a no or they'll get a disappointment and then they're like, the whole world has just gone, you know, yeah. to, to, to yeah. poops or something. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's not, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I think think again as as we grow we know to filter those things yeah through the lord to mm-hmm. help us to walk through those but so many people haven't because they've almost been enabled mm-hmm. and sheltered and that was something that i early on wanted to teach my kids that yeah. you're not going to get everything you want of course i was a parent where i bought them a lot of stuff that i shouldn't have and i i share that you know yeah. i i made compensation for working long hours in the corporate world and making a big salary. So I thought that big salary went to just getting them anything they wanted. And then overhearing my son brag to the neighbor kids. And I'm like, I've created a monster. I mean, this is a cute little monster, but but I've (laughs) created a monster. monster. And that's where I had to sit down with my kids and saying, mom and dad have made the decision that Mm -hmm. we're, that I'm going to leave the corporate world for health issues and just some things, we decided to become a single family income. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I had a lot of friends that said, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. You can do that. If you look at your expectations Mm -hmm. and say, we may not be able to go on a big, huge family vacation every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to put that Ferris wheel in the driveway (laughs) and have 150 kids at your birthday party. And I did that. I planned all your I had oh, I people wish still I talk about that. That, that that my kids birthday party I had twins I spent stupid amounts of money <laughs> Um, making compensation because I was a, a working mom and I worked a lot of hours. Uh, my husband did too, and they were with nannies or daycare. And we had a Ferris wheel at one year. We had every year it was it had to be bigger yeah. wow. and better. And people say, "Oh yeah, you're the people that had the big Ferris wheel and the petting zoo and all that and the pony yeah. rides up and down the street." I mean, we did all of that. We we did stupid, crazy things, but it was coming to my children and saying, "Mom doesn't work anymore." Yeah. We're not going to have presents halfway up the tree. We're not going to always go on big, elaborate family vacations. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have big birthday extravaganzas. We're not going to be eating out and doing those things. We're going to, and, and most people are not wanting to give up those things. And so I hear people saying like, oh, you know, my husband, or we lost our home for heart. We, we have all those. And now I can't buy my, my kids Christmas gifts and people are even like, I'm a big proponent. I mean, I know that there's a need for fundraising and I have donated to GoFundMe accounts, but sometimes the GoFundMe accounts are so frivolous and they're like, I want to buy my kids this, this, and this and that. But why not have the conversation with your child and say, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Exchange those presents for being present with your family, yeah. being in his presence That's more. Good. I mean, I, I know like tomorrow the blog is going to be, I, I uh, stopped letting the ghost of Christmas past haunt me. Mm. And that's really what I did is I let mm. all these things and I had to have the best, 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 and that's my thing instead of just sitting down. And that's what we did. When I left the corporate world, I sat down and I, I addressed the expectations with my children that, nope, sorry, we, you know, we have, you know, we went three gifts in a stocking and then we went one gift and now it's just a stocking. Yeah. Um, and, but it hasn't cheated my children in any way. Yeah. I think that it's, it's built their character because they thought, you know what? It's simple and, and, and beautiful doesn't mean extravagant, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, it, it's just, I think we just need to have that expectation because even as adults, yeah. I mean, yeah. For a long time, it was all about, like I said, I had resentment against my husband because I'm like, you better buy me a good, you buying yeah. me junk. And I'm thinking, it's not really about the gifts at all. Yeah. yeah. But I, but it's having those conversations because there are going to be times people are going to lose their job. There's going to be a sickness. There, I mean, sometimes. Or setbacks or, or whatever. Setbacks yeah, or whatever mm-hmm. But a lot of times people buy out of guilt. And, or, but I think it's just really, it's just setting them down and just mm-hmm. letting them know mm-hmm. and not just expectations at Christmas time, but each and every day. Yeah. You That's know? good though. You, you're, you're so right on with the, 
you didn't just change everything and not kind of give your kids a heads up. You sat them down and you had the conversation and you were honest. And they them. weren't happy. I mean, I remember yeah. there were some tears from my son. He was not happy. <laughs> he was That's not happy. He's like, we don't even get like the big, like the big family gift. You know, that was like, you know, we or something big, you know, like a big gift item yeah. was, you know, that. Nope, that's and it's not like, happening. It's like, no, honey, but you can keep all this stuff from last year and the year yeah, before yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's true. But I mean, I remember there being tears, but I know, yeah. you know, or just, you know, vacations and different things like that. I mean, we can't go on vacation every year. You yeah. know, we can't just go, you know... Uh, do whatever we want. You're like, I'm disappointed too, but this is what's going to yeah, be happening. Right. Now. <laughs> right. But I look at those things as, gosh, though, I was able to, to leave the corporate world and be at home with my kids yeah. when they were five years old. And yeah. I got some flags from some friends and family members thinking like, why would you give up that corporate salary? And your kids are in school all day long. So why yeah. do you need to be home? And then I went back to work part time. Um, but since 2012, I have not worked outside of the home except for the nonprofit, which I don't take a salary for the right. ministry from 2012. That's all, you know, I do that. Mm -hmm. And it's a full-time job, but yeah. I, I know that that's where God had to get me. He had to have me say, you got to be a good steward in this. You cannot mm -hmm. be by, you got, you got to have those expectations. You got to be a good steward. You got to, you know, manage a little bit better. You, you've got to do these things, but mm -hmm. it's helped me in running the ministry. It's really, really has. Yeah, good. that's good. That's really good stuff. Um, so we talked a lot about like sitting in it for a moment in the disappointment. Um, and I have a quote here. The more you wallow in disappointment, the farther you are from getting back on the road to success. So you have to, I guess, observe the disappointment, whether there's something you need to learn from it or just mm -hmm. go sit in that experience, right. but not to wallow because you can't walk while you wallow. Ooh, that's good. You can't walk while you wallow. That's really good. Um, and there are three healthy ways to deal with disappointment. Um, first is to mourn and then release the disappointment. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the word mourn. You really mm -hmm. do have to sit in that yeah. disappointment and mourn it. Because if you just try to tuck it under the rug, it creeps back out eventually. Yeah, that's right. Because right. Um, you have to address it. I mean, it, you have to address it. Yeah. yeah um, sure. And I love this line. Don't let the disappointment be a shadow over your life. That's good. So you dress it when it, you know, when you're when you're done mourning yeah, it. Yeah, be able to let it go, move, move on. It on. Yeah. In yeah. recovery, we have there was a book that we did um, on my Thursday night recovery, and there is a quote that I think it says, "Don't let the disappointments of your past be the something hindrances like to your future or something like that." I don't mm -hmm. know the exact quote, but mm -hmm. that made me think of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We a lot of times people will get stuck. They'll wallow in those disappointments. Yeah, you gotta be like Elsa and let it go. Let it go. Best um, so number two <laughs> is to evaluate and adjust your expectations. And this one really speaks to me in particular because probably from my like late teens to, you know, yesterday, when I would be really disappointed, I would sit back and look at it and say, okay, how can I change this? I need to change what I want. Mm. I didn't get that, oh, so okay. I need to change what I want. And mm. I remember being like 19 and saying, okay, I'm going to figure out how to change this. to what. And people are like, what? But that was what I was doing without, real, without having the right words for it. I was just adjusting my expectations. Um, that's good. Uh, let's see. There's another side to disappointment. It can be crippling, but it can also be humbling. Yeah. Since it's a way to examine where and in whom we place our hope. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that, that's usually when people get that devastating disappointment, it's because their hope is in the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and I know for years I put my hopes in the wrong <laughs> things and lived with a lot of disappointments. And yeah. the, the expectations weren't built. But I think, you know, that's where that whole no comes into building mm -hmm. character. Yeah. And that's what we'd miss if we didn't take the time to sit mm -hmm. and look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you have to be mindful, too, that you don't get to a place where, you know, things might feel like they're constantly disappointing you or going not in, in the direction you hope for. So you start a approaching situations and saying, well, why bother? I'm right. going to get disappointed yeah. any, anyway, or yeah. I don't have high expectations. Why would I have high mm -hmm. expectations? Because I'm, they're not going to, they're going to fail anyway, or that is That's not the attitude. Response. Yeah. That's you the pitiful response. You do not want to have that attitude either. Negative, That's when yeah. it's time to look in the mirror, get in your Bible and ask God to realign those yes. expectations and, and evaluate them. Because I am someone like my, my sister will tell me, she's always like, you have such high expectations, mm -hmm. but it's a matter of I don't necessarily have high expectations of other people. I have expectations for myself. My kids know my expectations, but I've coupled that 
and my husband know my, knows my expectations, but I understand grace mm -hmm. and I understand where we put our hope. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be mindful of you do. This is not by any means saying, you know, lower your expectations right, right. and no, adjust them, adjust. have them. It's okay to have high expectations. It's okay to want things mm -hmm. for yourself and for your family, good things and biblical mm -hmm. things and goals and all those things. I don't think we can walk through life just right. expecting little. But you know that there's going to be work in that. There's going to be some sewing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be um, times of struggle. And it's just a matter of not just throwing your hands up in the air and right. saying, well, this is just what life has dealt me. Um, I loved how you said going back to the word because, you know, mm -hmm. today on the blog, on our Worthy Thought Wednesday, the word was reassure. Mm -hmm. And I looked okay. at the definition of reassure, and it says that um, to, to encourage someone that had been in fear and doubt. And I said, you know, when you go to fear that's and good. doubt, let the word of God reassure, reassure you. you. That's good. Because that's what it is, is reassuring us. So then mm -hmm. when we've maybe gone to the disappointments or the things like that, mm -hmm. where do we need to be reassured? In the word, mm -hmm. in God, and let him reassure us so we're mm -hmm. not wallowing in yeah. that mm -hmm. disappointment. Yeah, and he does a good job of, of sending people to us too. Exactly. To help us reassure one another and mm -hmm. to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if you feel like this too if you're naturally an encourager or it's right. pretty easy for you to encourage other people i'm like that but yet i still need a lot yes. of encouragement and i have a hard time being encouraged but i'm glad that i'm surrounded with uh, definitely y'all two or the dream team but you definitely mm -hmm. Encouragers, we need those people yeah. to come beside us and, and you know really encourage us. Yeah. I, I'm blessed that I have some great encouragers. Yeah, and yeah, truth tellers. Um, yes, we exactly. need truth tellers. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I feel like I should have said this part really in the beginning, but it's still a good time now. The um, the psychology of disappointment um, from their website. There's um, I guess a definition here. When someone considers a risky action, he or she will form a prior expectation of the payoff. And if the outcome is worse than expected, that person will experience an emotion called disappointment. If the outcome exceeds expectation, the emotion is called elation. And I feel like if we're talking about kids, the reason this is important is because you give them words to understand what they're dealing with. Right. I loved when you said you sat down with your kids and talked to them. And I loved when you said, um, wow. Okay, <laughs> about your, but, so but about the kids that yeah. you 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 ask them questions right. and you say I understand I've been or I, I understand how you're feeling right. letting yeah. them all understand how you're feeling that's disappointment or in yeah. this situation this is elation this is yeah. you know giving right. them terms yeah. that they can kind of understand yeah, yeah. I think so it really comes with. down to like what Kim started with it's all about communication yeah so we hope that you've enjoyed this week's a new view on life lessons. This episode really, it is key on everything is communication. We talked about in our first episode all about uh, training up a child. We're big kids too. We need to be <laughs> trained in the word of God on things that we need to do in our life. A Proverbs a day is a great way to start. Our second episode this week, we talked about um, those toxic relationships and the negative people and how we can kind of to, to navigate on those. And then this episode, we talked about dealing with disappointment and addressing expectations. So the key is communication. And we hope that you've enjoyed a new view. We've given you a new view of how you can go and you can learn some of these life lessons and teach some of these life lessons to those in your life. We hope you have a great week and a great holiday. Take care.